guys, Miss Kulkarni here. So in this video, let's talk about a medicinal chemistry drug, dexamethasone. So this is the structure for dexamethasone. Why are we considering this structure? You probably heard about this drug recently. It's in the news and this is showing some potential for COVID-19 treatment. And I just thought it is so interesting drug. We know about this drug. It is an old drug and it is in the classes of steroidal because it's called steroid and is the anti-inflammatory drug. It is used for simple inflammations, for maybe allergy, for skin irritations and all those kind of things. And the structure which we see here with multiple rings, that is a structure of a steroid. So what is this video going to be focused on? It's going to be focused on drug development and what are the challenges and also difficulties in that process. Also, just like dexamethasone, many times old drugs are brought back to market. That's called repurposing. So how does this repurposing of old drugs work? Then we will also quickly discuss the chemical structure related to functional groups and stereochemistry. So that will be pretty interesting. And then we will briefly cover the synthetic pathway for this molecule. Now remember, the steroids are also some compound which could be made in body and some could be made synthetically. So let's begin with our first drug development process. If you want to make a new drug, a brand new medicine, you have to start from the lab work. And then the process starts with finding the lead in the lab, then synthesis and going all the way through a lengthy process to finally FDA. That's a long, long process and it may take not just months, years, not just one or two years, sometimes even it may take 10, 15 years. So definitely it is a long process for us to wait to get a new drug in the market. It's also a complex process. You come up with a synthetic pathway and that pathway may or may not work. Also, your drug finally, when you make the drug, you have to also test it and you can have any time some problems in those multiple steps towards the end. Then the process is of course expensive. It's time consuming. So definitely you will need chemicals. You'll have to pay for the salary, all those things. But definitely it will be an expensive process to bring a new drug to market. And this is the most important thing. Many times we have uncertain results. In spite of designing and making a drug, finally you may or may not be able to get FDA approval. Or even if you get FDA approval, you may have to withdraw the drug for a couple of reasons. So anyway, the new drug development process which we have usually takes a lot on you. That does not mean it is of no use. Definitely there is a value for that. So what we do is we actually start putting some old drugs for testing. That's called repurposing. The drug may be prescribed for a particular purpose and you may decide, hey, maybe can I use the drug for so and so. It's a possibility of one drug to be used for multiple purposes. In that case, what are the advantages if we use an old drug which is known to us? Number one, we already know the chemical structure. We know the properties of the drug and not just physical properties. We know a lot of things about solubility, about the bioavailability, about LD50, many things we already know. The main important thing, if it is a natural product, we know the source from where we can obtain that, extract that. Or if it is uh, synthetically made, we also know how to synthesize that. So that makes it easier. And we can use the same method or we can modify, tweak that method, but we have some background knowledge. This is important. 
we already know the pharmacology of the drug. We know what is LD50 for the drug. We know what is the AD50. We know a lot of the things about the drug which we need for a drug to qualify as a potential good medicinal drug. Also, there is an important part is pharmacokinetics of the drug, how the drug behaves in the body, about the metabolism. So, this puts us into better shape because we have some background knowledge. Okay, now let's talk about the drug structure. And what is interesting to me is it has got multiple functional groups and all those groups, of course, play some role. But let's see if you can remember how to identify different functional groups so there is one does it ring the bell what is it that is a ketone then of course you know these these are double bond so double bond will be an alkene it will be a double bonded cyclic compound that's the only difference which we got then we also see couple of OH over here. What does OH stands for? That is alcohol group. Then we also have over here a group which is not exactly an acid. It is CO and this is CH2 but it will have some properties which gives the polarity for the compound. Now all these functional groups have an important role to play. Also there are multiple rings you see over here and those rings give a particular structure to this steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, you want to know one more thing? This compound has many chiral centers and we discuss chiral centers in Taxol in other video. Which are the chiral centers you can find out in this particular compound. I'm going to get you started with some of those. Hopefully we can find all but if not you can find the rest of those. So a chiral center is the one which has a carbon atom bonded to all four different groups. Do you spot one? I can see one over here. Look at that. This particular one here. There is an hydrogen atom which is not shown but we got hydrogen on one side, OH on the other side and this other two rings part on the both side. So that's one of the chiral center which we got. I can clearly find out this as a chiral center too. There is fluorine and then three different parts of the ring. How about this? That becomes chiral carbon too. The ring part you can divide in two different directions and that qualifies to be two different groups. Do you see anything else? There is one hydrogen which is not shown over here. So that qualifies that one also as a chiral carbon. How about this one? This one also will have an hydrogen over here. So there is another one. Do you see another? I can see that one over here. And I see one more over here. Then there is more. I can also get this carbon and I think finally this will be hydrogen. So that's one. So I think we got most of the chiral centers. So now let's go over the organic synthesis which was done by the classic method whole time. And I know there are new ways we can always start making new compound but I thought this method has some important reactions which would be good to review. The starting material was 16 methyl prednisolone and that's the methyl group which we got. Uh, we may need to cover numbering of steroids maybe in some other video. And then we have this OH group here. In organic chemistry synthesis we need to protect some groups so this group in general will be protected as acetyl groups so I can just write down over here those as acetyl groups and then at the end of course we can cleave it and we can get the OH group back there so anyway going back we have this starting material we use methyl chloride and that results into dehydration compound this is same as elimination when what is eliminated 
it's the OH from here and H from here that's eliminated and we end up getting water out from that. So we can say minus H2O. That results into an unsaturated compound and alkene over there. Pretty interesting, right? Then the next step is quite important. It is a step in which we make a epoxide. And in the classic method, they use these reagents. I have done epoxide with MCPBA and some other reagents. But let's maybe study what they did. So by using these reagents, they ended up getting that alkene converted to an epoxide. We are not going to go into detail about epoxides, uh, the orientation and stereochemistry. But what happens to the epoxide? when it's treated with hydrogen fluoride, HF in THF. In that case, we end up cleaving that epoxide and we get one side OH and one side fluoride group. And that's what is dexamethasone. Again, we are not going to discuss more about the stereochemistry. It's very interesting stereochemistry with steroids which we have over there. So basically, the synthesis reaction has two important reactions. One is elimination. Second is epoxidation. And if you call, you can say the third one will be opening the epoxide and getting the selective compound, which is dexamethasone. Here's a big question. This is still under study and we have no idea where it's going to go. But in general, in medicinal chemistry, we always have seen in the past that many drugs which are used for some different purposes are brought back or even some drugs were pulled out of the market like thalidomide and it was brought back for some different purpose. So we have some examples of repurposing of the old drugs and just now we discussed what are the advantages. We also have some new drug design and development and that goes to multiple stage. Both these methods are well known and each one has advantages as well as some disadvantages. The big question is which option to go for and to be honest there is not a definite answer. It depends upon the time, it depends upon the expenses. So there are a lot of factors which go into that and you may want to think about that and come up with maybe more ideas. Uh, as to decide which one will be your method of choice. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.